Fortinet is giving up on SSL VPN. Yes, for real. Hi, I'm Alex, and this is Next Gen Land channel. Let's make it work. Why? Well, the main reason is simple. Software libraries used for SSL VPN are quite complex and have lots of potential issues. So something like every year, maybe every half a year, Fortinet was discovering a new major vulnerability and was issuing an emergency update for its firewalls firmware. And these issues are not anyway unique for Fortinet. Pretty much any major security vendor has its own SSL VPN software and pretty much any of them had uh, regular issues with uh, vulnerabilities. And looks like Fortinet had enough. And they decided to slowly give up on SSL VPN at all. Slightly different approaches from different models and firmware versions, but overall it will be done in three major phases. Phase 1, starting version 7.4. SSL VPN configuration will be hidden from GUI by default, but can be enabled using CLI commands and used in full scale. Phase 2, starting version 7.6. SSL VPN will be moved into a separate virtual machine inside the firewall, nested virtualization, but as it requires a lot of RAM, models with just 2 gigs of RAM will not have SSL VPN support at all. If you have any configuration, it will be deleted. Phase 3, it's unofficial for now. Starting 7, uh, version 7.8, there will be no SSL VPN configuration anymore on any Fortinet platform at all. The most of models support SSL VPN up to 7.4 versions. In 7.4, SSL VPN menu in GUI requires enabling if it was not configured before. The virtual appliance supports SSL VPN even with 7.6, but requires more RAM to be allocated. E-Series support SSL VPN in 7.6 only starting model 140E. F-Series supports SSL VPN in 7.6 starting 70F. G-Series is a complete mess. 30G and 50G officially do not support SSL VPN at all, but it can work in some firmware versions, but not officially supported. It was a quote. 90G has it supported in all 7.0 versions, except the latest one, 7.0.16 and 7.0.17. If you upgrade your 70, uh, 90G to 7.0.16 or 7.4.6, your SSL VPN configuration will be gone. But 90G have SSL VPN supported in 7.2.10, but not in 7.6.1. Starting model 120G, uh, SSL VPN supported even in 7.6. If you already have SSL VPN configured, the configuration will stay untouched between 7.0, 7.2, and 7.4, except 7.0.16 and 7.4.6 for version 90G. No additional actions needed. If you don't have SSL VPN enabled after upgrading to 7.4, you will have to enable SSL VPN using commands config system settings, set GUI SSL VPN enable. Otherwise, it will not even be shown in firewalls GUI at all. Upgrading to, uh, to version 7.6 on devices without SSL VPN support will remove SSL VPN configuration completely, including policies. Devices with SSL VPN support will have their configs untouched after upgrading to 7.6. Well, we have two options here. First of all, we have Zero Trust Network Access, the TNA. It's a good option, but only for big-scale setups, as it requires full-scale infrastructure to be installed and integrated, including the TNA servers, firewalls, licenses. Not something you could replace a quick and simple remote access solution and it still has some issues with bugs randomly happening here and there. Second option, actually recommended by Fortinet, is to use remote access IPsec, which is good, pretty lightweight, well-tested, well-secured solution that unfortunately could be a troubleshooting nightmare if something goes wrong. Fortinet mentions VPN wizard to replace SSL VPN tunnels, in fact, it's a wizard only to configure remote access IPsec tunnels, not to migrate your current SSL VPN configuration into IPsec remote access form. So, migration steps should be. First of all, remote access IPsec and SSL VPN can work in parallel. So first, configure, test, troubleshoot, fix IPsec before disabling SSL VPN. Second, Instead of having one IPsec tunnel with different user groups and policies applied, like you have it in SSL VPN, you will need a separate IPsec tunnel for each user group. 
Third one, new firewall policies have to be configured with IPsec in mind, which includes each IPsec tunnel, meaning each user group, requires its own set of policies. Each IPsec tunnel works as a separate interface, meaning five IPsec tunnels having access to five different zones configured on your firewall will make 25 blocks of policies in your firewall good. Fourth, client should create a new connection in their Fortinet client with IPsec VPN type and put configs you prepared. The only good news here, usernames and passwords can be used the same for both SSL VPN and IPsec remote access. First of all, there is no web VPN option for IPsec remote access. Second, by default, it uses UDP port 500, but you can use Fortinet's feature to change it to TCP port. Third one, no DNS split tunneling available, so you cannot send a message to a client to use specific internal DNS to resolve your internal hosts, but you can use external DNS to resolve everything else. Fourth and the last one, there is no host checks or OS version filter. But the main problem from my point of view is complex troubleshooting overall. If something is wrong, tunnel establishing will just fail and that's it. In many situations, the only way to troubleshoot will be to check the client's logs, which is not that easy to get from a user who is already nervous about VPN doesn't work. For example, I had an issue connecting to my testing environment. After some troubleshooting, I found that the client complains about certificates not verified. And I fixed it. And I don't know how. I just fully removed the IPsec config from the firewall and from the client and reconfigured the IPsec tunnel with uh, these main points. First of all, split tunnel was enabled. Split tunnel addresses are set as a subnet, not as a range. Third one, I left phase two local and remote network untouched, so it's, it was all zeros. I was only relying on split tunnel config. I configured IPsec VPN on the client side and got it connected. And no matter how many times I tried, I was not able to recreate the issue again. And it's not all. Looks like the same way Fortinet is giving up on the proxy feature. Yeah, that's one with memory always leaking. <laughs> that's all. Thank you for watching. Put your experience with SSL VPN configuration with the latest firmware versions in comments. Share, like, subscribe. See you next time.